Welcome to this introductory session to the SAP Business Partner. To open Business Partners in SAP S4HANA, we navigate to transaction code BP. And over here you can see the start screen for the Business Partner maintenance. Please be aware that in S4HANA, we only work with Business Partner objects. Back then in the old SAP ECC, ERP environment, we worked with Customer and Vendor Master data. However, in SAP S4HANA, we only work with business partners. Over here on the left-hand side, you can see the so-called locator. With the locator, you can search for already existing business partners. You can see here a field called Find, where we can select either that we want to search for business partners in general, or we could also select that we want to search for persons, organizations, or groups in particular. Because business partners are always created as a certain so-called business partner type, which can be a person, organization, or group. You can also see the same over here. Then you can see we can also search by number, address data, name, and so on. So there are many possibilities to search for existing business partners. I will show you even more ways in a minute. Over here we could also insert then, for instance, the number of the business partner, let's say 31, and you can see here business partner 31 is now displayed. If I would have selected by name, I would need to insert the name and not. Then you can see here max hit list. It is set to 100, meaning that only 100 entries will be displayed. I could also leave it out like that if necessary. Once we found a business partner, we can double click on the entry to display the details. The details are now displayed here on the right hand side. If we utilize a business partner on a regular basis, we could also save the business partner as a favorite. Therefore, we mark the business partner and then we click on this little icon over here saying add to my objects. You can see the business partner has now been added to our objects. Please be aware that this is based on your user. So other users won't see the business partners you saved as favorites. We can inspect the favorites via work list and over here you can see the business partner I just added. If for any reason I do not want this business partner in my favorite list anymore, I select it again and click on this little icon over here and now it's removed. Now let's actually create a new business partner via the tab Organizations. As said, we could also create a business partner as a person or as a group. But for now we will go with an organization. So this would be a customer or a vendor or even both. You can see that a lot has happened. Now, first of all, we need to select the so-called grouping for the business partner. The grouping will decide about the number that is issued by the system once we save the business partner. So behind the grouping, a so-called number range is stored. Let's select one. Then you can see over here, a role has been defaulted. This role is called business partner general. This is the role which is always assigned to our business partner. The business partner itself depends on a role concept, meaning that we can assign one or even multiple roles to a single business partner. And these roles display the relationship of the business partner from an administrative point of view. So the role business partner general would store general information about the business partner, like the name, let's just insert one, test BP for instance, the search term, let's just copy this one, this is used then to search for the business partner, the address data for the business partner, including international versions. So for instance, for different keyboards, for the Chinese language, for instance, for the Chinese language, for instance, PO box information and communication data. Then we have the address overview. Here, this is rather new. With S4HANA, we can store multiple addresses for the business partner. So for instance, we could have one address of the headquarter. We can also have deviating addresses for ship to and so on if needed. Then we have an identification tab. Here we could insert some information like legal form and legal entity of the business partner, the date the company was founded with which we are interacting with, as well as industries, which is also new with S4HANA. In the ECC, so in the ERP environment, you were only able to store one industry for a customer or a vendor. However, with business partners, we can store multiple industries our business partner is operating in. So for example, if we are dealing with an international or multinational vendor, then this vendor could be operating in different industries. So I could select here one or even multiple industries for this vendor. Let's just say for instance, that this vendor is operating in financial services and the vendor is also operating in the real estate environment. Then we got here also identification numbers for identifying the business partner, for instance, a Duns & Bradstreet number to accumulate legal information about our business partner. And then this is also new, we have the tax numbers. So we store here a tax category, 
in combination with the tax number of our business partner, as well as the tax classification. Then we have the control tab where we could select a business partner type. So this is used to differentiate between business partners, even though different business partners could have the same roles. And it's basically used for maintaining the field selection. So let's just imagine that we have two business partners, both created in the role business partner general. Then we could still say that one of the business partners should have another field selection than the other one. So field selection meaning mandatory fields, optional fields, and so on. And we have the authorization group. This is used for authorization management. So we can actually say what business partner can be maintained by which user group. We can store some notes if necessary, as well as business hours. And the text classification is also kind of redundantly displayed over here again. We have payment transactions where we could insert bank details. And we can even say that only IBAN information is allowed over here via customizing. We can also store payment cards like Visa, MasterCard and so on if necessary. And then we have the status of the business partner where we can set an archiving flag for the business partner. And this field over here, the central block indicator, actually it does not work. We block business partners on purchase organization, sales organization or company code level, but the central block here actually won't work if you set it. We can store additional texts and technical information if necessary. Normally we could now save the business partner. That worked fine. Now let's navigate to the supplier financial accounting, which is FLVN00. You can see that most of the tabs here are the same like the role business partner general. This is because the data from the general business partner role only needs to be created once and will be pulled into the other roles. So the name was pulled over the search term and so on. However, we can also see four new indicators over here, legal data, where we can insert some more information about balance sheet data and so on. The vendor general data tab, where we can also see the associated account group and our vendor number. This number could actually deviate from the business partner number depending on our settings. And here it's important to mention that for all of the transactions we utilize, for instance, purchasing, finance transactions and so on, we would still use the number that is displayed over here. So we would not go with the business partner number if those two numbers deviate, but with the vendor number. If the numbers are the same, it doesn't matter. Here you can also see customer if we connect a vendor and a customer under the same business partner, this would become necessary and some more information like payment transaction indicators and so on. Vendor text data is a tab where we could insert more text information and vendor text. However, you may have noticed that we also have two tabs over here called company code and relationships. Let's click on company code and here we can fill company code specific data for the business partner. So what we do over here is we first of all click on company codes, then we select our company code and mark it as relevant for the supplier. And then we click on adopt. Now we are allowed to fill the different tabs for our company code. So first of all, the reconciliation account, and then we can see over here some more indicators for the account management, for the interest calculation, withholding tax, and reference data like the previous account number and personal number. We have vendor payment transactions where we could include payment terms as well as tolerance groups, check double invoice indicator to make sure that we do not enter the same invoice twice, payment methods that are allowed for this account as well as the house bank and also a payment block indicator if necessary. Then we could specify whether a clearing with customer is allowed, whether single payments should be possible and also some more indicators for automatic payment transactions. We got the vendor correspondence tab where we could insert dunning data and the correspondence section where we could insert some more correspondence data. We have the vendor status where we could actually block the vendor for company codes and the vendor withholding tax with withholding information per company code. Yeah, and this is basically it. Let's save this vendor. We can see that there is one more mandatory field, which is the country and the language key. And we can always click on the check icon to see if there are more mandatory fields. So for now here, yeah, we need to fill also some more address information. This should be fine, let's save. And last but not least, to have a fully maintained vendor, we also need to add the FLVN01 role, which is for the purchasing view of the vendor. So let's select this one. The tabs over here in the general data, also called the A segment, are the same. However, now we have the purchasing tab. Let's click on this one. We include a purchasing organization, click on transfer. And now we can insert the purchasing data like the conditions, the order currency, let's say US dollar, payment terms, INCO terms, some correspondence data, some control data like the goods received based invoice verification so that the invoices always refer to the goods received. 
the auto-evaluated goods received settlement for automatic invoice creation for instance, a purchasing group, whether an automatic purchase order is allowed, purchasing blocks if necessary, and we can also block the purchase organization and some additional service data. Here we also have the partner functions, so we could include for instance a deviating ship to party, bill to party and so on. We have additional purchasing data for the supplier part assortment data. We have a tab called interchangeability, where we could display some vendor subrange information, the vendor text and the supply region. That's basically it. Let's save. Now we have created a whole business partner. In this case, a vendor. If needed, for instance, if this business partner is also our customer, we could include the roles FLCU00 and FLCU01. Yeah, this marks the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, then please subscribe to my channel and activate the bell to not miss any more content. See you next time.